Good morning and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. We're talking about turkeys in the timber this morning. And I've coined that term for their eastern wild turkey. I'm going to talk a little bit about the life history of this bird. Um, this time of year in the spring, it's a beautiful time to be outdoors. Out getting a, a walk in this morning uh, and doing some videoing for you. There are other subspecies. We won't go into those today. Uh, but as you move west, uh, there are a number of species that we have in the United States, maybe for another video. Uh, Eastern wild turkey, the male turkeys are called gobblers, and the females are called hens. And usually a gobbler, when they're one year old, uh, they'll develop a beard. Uh, they have wattles, which is the, the red skin on the neck. We'll show you that. And the beards can grow anywhere from four to five inches a year, uh, biologists tell us. Either way, a two-year-old bird uh, will, will easily have an eight, nine-inch beard. Uh, you age turkeys by their spur length. Um, last year I did a video on aging white-tailed deer by deer jaws. And turkeys, typically you, you'd age them by the length of their spurs. A one-inch spur is very typical for a three-year-old bird, but it, it, it could give or take a quarter inch either way. A brief history about the wild turkey in Virginia. Gary Norman, forest game bird biologist with Department of Wildlife Resources in Virginia, writes, Early settlers in the 17th to 19th centuries were dependent on wild game for meat year-round due to inadequate methods of food preservation. Most forests had been cut for lumber, or to be developed as agricultural lands for crops or grazing domestic animals. Overhunting with market hunting in combination with this fact led to populations of wild turkeys being their lowest during the periods of 1880 to 1910. Concern for the wild turkey conservation led to the passage of the Robin Bill in Virginia during 1912, which prohibited the sale of open markets of wild turkey and several other species of birds. However, enforcement of this bill and other legislation restricting hunting methods and bag limits did not come into effect until 1916, when the Department of Wildlife Resources was established. The next milestone came in 1929, where efforts were made to rear and hatch birds from wild eggs and then being released into the wild. Of course this was unsuccessful and proves the fact that raising birds and returning them to the wild does not work. They lack the imprinted uh, assistance that they need from their parents to evade predators and be wary. A new procedure was developed in 1955 whereby native turkeys were trapped and transferred to areas with suitable habitat. This method proved highly successful from 1955 to 1993, where nearly 900 wild turkeys were trapped and relocated in Virginia, primarily to the Southwest and Tidewater regions. The National Wild Turkey Federation also has extensive credit needs to be due them for enhancing the bird numbers in Virginia and nationally. Their efforts to trap and release birds have proven successful as well over time. So as we walk on this edge, this timber was harvested and planted in pine. And these pines are probably less than uh, 10 to 12 years old. Too small for a turkey to roost in. But thanks to good best management practices in Virginia for water quality, there are buffers and quite often there are hardwoods along the streams where turkeys can roost. On the adjoining property line here, you can see we've got some tulip tree and oak, more mature for turkeys to roost in. So they need a place to get off the ground to get away from predators and they roost there at night. Uh, and then they'll fly down to an open area uh, in the morning. And in this case, in the spring, they're, it's mating season. So all those gobbles you were hearing in the background were turkeys that were trying to attract a hen. And so I'm going to try to dispel a few myths in this video, but certainly not solve them all. 
And what I've learned is my 45 plus years in the woods hunting and spending time with people that know a lot more about it than I do and trying to guide some people along the way to, to teach them. Okay, well back to turkeys in the timber. These two gobblers are strutting their stuff in a small opening in the forest. Along comes a hen to check out which one's the most handsome. The other gobbler decided he would just go cool off and take it easy for the rest of the day. One of the things that many uh, outdoorsmen do not realize with the wild turkey is that the hens go to the gobblers. So as a hunter, you're trying to do essentially the opposite of what's happening in Mother Nature. So you're yelping, trying to sound like a hen, and you're trying to call the gobbler in. And it does work if you're set up in the right place. And so knowing the woods and knowing the habitat, studying them a little bit, putting out cameras, seeing where they want to be, a very small portion of it is actually calling. World champion turkey caller and still have a bad day in the woods with turkeys. Flip side of that is I've actually heard wild turkeys that sounded pretty rough. So turkey myth number two is, did Benjamin Franklin deem the wild turkey our national bird? Well, this story about Ben Franklin wanting the national bird to be a turkey, unfortunately, is just a myth. This false story began due to a letter Franklin wrote to his daughter criticizing the original eagle design for the great seal, saying that it looked more like a turkey. In the letter, Franklin wrote that the bald eagle is a bird of bad moral character. He does not get his living honestly. He is too lazy to fish for himself. Well, about the turkey. So Franklin wrote that in comparison to the bald eagle, the turkey is a much more respectable bird and a true original native of America. He is, besides, though a little vain and silly, a bird of courage. So although Ben Franklin defended the honor of the turkey against the bald eagle, he did not propose that the turkey become one of America's most important symbols. So a gobbler will go out into a spot such as here, even though we're talking about turkeys in the timber. They roosted in this timber, and they've flown down, or maybe they're a ways away in timber. But either way, they're working their way to an open area where they can strut and display, like these videos here. Once they get out in the open, the gobblers fan their fans out and puff up their feathers just as big as they can. And they basically display so the hens can see them from a distance. This is oftentimes when gobblers can be preyed upon. Uh, it's mating season, their mind's on the hens, and they may drop their guard a little bit. So occasionally uh, some of the biggest predators we have of eastern wild turkey are uh, red fox, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, coyotes, bobcats. Um, I'm told by Dr. Michael Chamberlain, who's a very well-respected uh, professor was actually my roommate at Virginia Tech. Uh, I'm going to try to share some statistics on the screen with you about turkey survival here in a bit. But he shared that uh, research has shown that the harassment of predators on turkeys, the chasing them, the stalking them, the following them around, stressing the birds out, actually um, deteriorates the bird's health. They don't they don't feed like they should. They may not even mate, or they, they just don't mate. They know that when they gobble, there's something coming. So it, it's a different bird today, at least than what I hunted 35 years ago. There's less birds, I think. Uh, and nest predators is a big uh, cause of decline of eastern wild turkey. Nest predators include raccoon, possum, snakes, uh, even foxes, and coyotes. Other major threats to turkeys include development, loss of habitat, and overhunting. So let's talk some more about turkey behavior. In early spring, gobblers begin their courtship rituals, and occasional sparring matches occur with other males when competing for a mate. Hens begin laying eggs each day 
and usually they're up to 10 to 20 eggs in a nest. Incubation lasts about 28 days. And turkey poults are born precocial, meaning they are born with feathers and are ready to venture out within 24 to 48 hours. Research also points to nest success rates of only 20%, and more than 30% of poults are lost by the time that they are one month old. Turkeys need open areas to bug, and nearly the entire diet of a turkey poult is insects, as you can see from this listing here. Adult birds feed on a more mixed bag of diet, including nuts and acorns. Masts have proven to be very important in the breeding success of turkeys in the spring due to the conditions of the hens going into breeding. This gobbler is out enjoying the early spring warm-up and the greenery that comes with it after a long winter of eating acorns and mast. Speaking of the warm-up, along comes the mites and insects as well, so turkeys dust themselves in order to ward off the insects that plague them all summer. Did I say earlier that the gobblers had beards? Well, occasionally a hen will have a beard, which is fairly rare. Even more rare is to find a gobbler without a spurt. Here's a mature bird recently harvested by a friend of mine that had no spurs, probably most likely due to old age. Turkeys need hardwood bottoms and ridges with access to water and many other habitats in order to survive and thrive. They generally do best in landscapes that are about half forested and half open. Forested areas provide escape cover, places to roost and loaf, and food in the form of the mast, hard mast and, and soft mast that we showed you earlier. Openings provide areas for courtship display nesting and brood rearing cover. Some tools you can use on your property to help with turkey management include prescribed fire. It resets the vegetation back for growth that they need. Creating some bare ground through disking. Timber stand improvement. And even if you're cutting hay this spring and summer, consider putting a guard on the front of your tractor with chains to ward off the nesting turkeys. So one of the take-home messages with managing for the wild turkey is to find the missing link that may be uh, on your property. You may not be aware of what that is, and perhaps your neighbor has it, and that's good. Get to know your neighbor, look at an aerial map, and check out the habitats uh, that you have available on your property, as well as on your neighbor. Work with a wildlife biologist or consultant that has skills with managing for wildlife as well as timber and perhaps you can help this bird to thrive and continue to exist so that we can enjoy the wild turkey. Thank you for watching 15 Minutes in the Forest, Turkeys in the Timber. Get out this spring and listen and, and see all the joys that the woods can bring and try to manage your habitat in a way that will benefit the multiple needs of the wild turkey. Stay tuned for the next episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest.